today is one of those days where no matter how I do my hair, it just does not want to cooperate. I had to actually brush my hair in order to make this work. So that's how my hair is doing today. Anyways, hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Or hi, if you're new, there's a subscribe button down there that would love your attention. Today, doing another book video because we know you like them. <laughs> and to be quite honest, I really enjoyed them as well. It was a dyslexic anxiety of like, have I read enough books to make book content? <laughs> Apparently I have. So today we are going way, let's just say way back because I'm not that old, I'm only 20. So we're gonna do a little like trip down memory lane. I forgot it for a second. So we're gonna go ahead and have some like childhood book nostalgia. I got my mum to send me pictures of my bookcase from home. My main thing I think with this video is like the books that meant a lot to me as a child, that I would actually read as a child if you're new, I'm dyslexic, so as a child getting me to read was, you know, a task. It's very important what you read as a child and how that cultivates your like love of learning and love of literature, so clearly something went well with what I read as a child because, you know, it's my entire degree. Maybe this will like be a nostalgic thing for you guys as well, so. These are the books that like meant a lot to me as a child. Let's just start with what is for me the most important book that's like shaped my entire childhood and love of learning. That is Roald Dahl. Very specifically, Matilda. This is the most important book to me. Like this is like the most important thing I guess I've ever read because you know, as a little girl, reading a character who is, you know, a strong little independent girl, woman, doing her thing, and she loves to read. And it's like, your ch the child's intelligence, her like outspokenness, her imagination is all celebrated. And that's just, oh, and all of the villains and baddies are always grown up in Roald Dahl, and I really enjoy that. And you know, he's like, how he's animals, but people. Like, I just, I loved all of her, I basically loved all of his books as a child, but very, very specifically, Matilda was just, She's just like my literary heroine in a way. Like, I adore that character. And I just like, I'm so indebted to Roald Dahl in like how he has shaped me as a reader. And especially in this country, most people read Roald Dahl as a child. Like, how could, how could you not? And then the pictures were always great. Getting to read some pictures as well, you're like, yeah. So Matilda is like probably, it is my favorite childhood book ever. I just, means, the world to me. It's funny and it's well written and it's just, it's one of those things that makes you really enjoy reading. And that like, especially as a dyslexic child is very important. Like if you wanted me to read anything, it had to be worth it. No, I wouldn't want to read something that was terrible. Imagine how much brain power it takes you, it takes like childhood dyslexic ever, even more. So in it, it's gonna feel like worth the effort I'm gonna put in. But I also really liked Fantastic Mr. Fox because I managed to read that in one day. Do you know, I literally remember the moment so clearly that I actually finished reading it and I got to tell my mum that I'd read it in one day and like how important that was to me and like sign of achievement because I was actually able to do something like that. And I was like, look, I could do this. Ah, it's, the fact that I remember that so clearly, it says something about how like, it was an issue, well it was an issue for me, but like how psychologically and developmentally it was an issue for me in terms of confidence. Woo! They're just such original stories and I love Ezeotrot. Ezeotrot is such a sweet, so, so sweet and took me a very long time to realise it's tortoise spelt backwards. I know. And I think Twitter was always funny. I love James and the Giant Peach. I feel like probably some people don't like that one, but I really liked it. And I had this like big book of like all Roald Dahl stories, which I really loved that one. Minpins? I always think of that one differently because the illustrations are not, what's his name? Quentin Blake, but not the same person. And that's a bit longer as well. But I know I really, really liked that one. And that one I read quite a few times. It's just easy when it's colorful and there's pictures and then yeah, okay, I can read the words too. Sometimes, but I don't have to. <laughs> the two classics that I was introduced to first that my mum bought me was The Secret Garden and Black Beauty. I read those multiple times and that is saying something. I very, very rarely reread, um, especially as a child, but I loved those. I haven't read them in an incredibly long time, so I really can't remember what happens, but I remember that they were my first like proper books, let's put it that way. Like, yeah, I'd read loads of books and I had loads of books, but those are my first proper books with no pictures. I think that was the main thing. They were like proper classic editions. There were no pictures. It was just a normal book. Oh, actually, and before I forget it, because it's on my list, another book that was really important 
was this childhood, like this child version of Homer's Odyssey that mum, I think it was from my older brother, and then I read it as well. And I read that cover to cover, so that's how I know like most of Odysseus's story really well and his the legends. That one was so good. So it's a really good way of like getting your child to like acknowledge classics because in a way they will later come back to it and then be like, wait, I know this. Wait, I know this. Because that's kind of how it felt. Because when you're as a child, you're not reading all of the like pretentious overtones that now exist about classics and stuff. So you just enjoy it. And then later you come back to it and you're like, oh, I know this story. I know what happens. Wait, how do I know this? But that was a really, really good one. But anyway, sorry, back to Secret Garden and Black Beauty. I like the Secret Garden because it has this sort of, it's you're discovering a secret. And I like, God, if you didn't know, I'm a big fan of plants. Plants. I love plants. So just anything to do like gardens and like secrets. And like every time then as a child I'd be in like a walled garden. I'd be like, oh my god, I'm in the secret garden. Oh my god, and black beauty. If I'd have been more of a horse person, I think I would have loved it even more. But I did like that book. I know I didn't like it as much as the secret garden. Or did I? I can't remember. But those are like my first two proper novels I think I ever had. There was this other series called Ink Heart. I think it's Ink Heart, Ink Spell, and Ink Death. And they're like chunky mother effing books, but I read them. I think my brother had them. The films were trash, I'm sorry, they were not very good, but I really enjoyed the books. Cause you know when you're like, I don't know, 11, 12, those books, cause you feel like you're reading something like good and meaty. You're just reading this like fantasy kind of imaginary world and it's fun because it gives your imagination a springboard. All I know is that I really enjoyed it. And I was very, very in love with the fire character. The one who had the like, the massive like, scar down his eye. I had a thing for him. <laughs> and it's like, when you get to the age where you start like falling in love with characters, that like, you know you want to read more and more and definitely that. I read those around that age and I was just kind of like, oh, in love with the characters. And also those books revolve also around people who love books. So it's this kind of thing of like reading about people, about like book reading and book culture in like a romanticized way, obviously like then encourages you to read more because now it's a romanticized idea and ideal and you're like, yeah. Actually, that brings me to obviously the scene in Beauty and the Beast. She goes into the library and it's amazing. But that is just, I, I don't know, anything was like a romanticization of reading and stories. That is a good thing, I'd say. Like, yeah, romanticize it because if you get more people to like, go, oh yeah, books, then you expose people to so much literature and like the desire and the drive to read and consume. It's like, good thing. So I definitely think that had an impact and obviously look at me. Do you not think I think I was Belle when I was a child? Yeah, even though I had a Cinderella and I believe a Snow White costume, but in my head I was Belle. I, in my head I still think I am Belle, but it's more when you get to the age where you realize an 18th century library like that would have cost millions, literally would have cost so much money. So obviously Belle was really happy when she like looked up a library because books were really expensive in the 18th century really expensive. So I sidetracked but a fun fact for anything that glorifies book culture and like pass books everywhere and in awesome. This morning mum and I were just looking at like bookshelves. On Pinterest, we were just searching bookshelves and I've got like a pin Pinterest board of just beauty. Oh another one, I'm not doing this chronologically, I probably should have done it chronologically. I don't know if any of you read the magic key books. I know that they're still used to teach kids to read I thought they were really good to help me learn to read because I really, really, really enjoyed them. What was it? Biff, Chip and Kipper, I think. And they had a dog. They were a good series. I think I really liked The Pretense. Kind of like Narnia, but I never actually read any of the Narnia books. I read, I watched the films. But do you know, it's like you find something hidden and then the hidden thing you find that only you know about is magical and you get to explore like fancy things and like that kind of concept. Really enjoy. I would still like to find like a secret bookcase somewhere Take a bookcase, bookcase that hides a stair and that hides a magic world. Still wouldn't mind that, but now I kind of like am more obsessed with the concept of like speakeasies, which is quite different, but the same concept because you open a door and there's a magical world behind. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move on. Oh, I literally did put on my list the library scene from Beauty and the Beast. Um, I'm telling you, like anything, if you want to get your child to read a bit more, like show them anything that romanticizes book culture and like to get them excited about seeing a beautiful bookcase, take them to a beautiful library. Like, no. <laughs> this is something that is very Belgian. I don't know if there is an English equivalent maybe, but I read a lot of like, not comic books in the American sense. In Dutch they're called strips, but it's just like comic books, but it's not American, bow, pang sort of superhero comic books. So at home, because my parents read them, they were all my parents' um, books. So it's Gerfia, Asterix and Obelix, and Suskinuiska. 
uh, and then the Roderider. So they're all the ones we had. My brother would always read The Red Knight. Sounds a lot better in Dutch. The Roderider. I know I definitely read Asterix and Obelix a lot. I really enjoyed those. And I really liked Iskandariska, and I sometimes read Gurfius, sometimes Tintin is how you know him as Tintin and Tanta, but it's Curfew. Thing is, they're all like French. Everyone thinks these things are French. They're not. They're Belgian, but they're French speaking Belgian. So everyone's like, oh, this is a French thing. I'm like, it's not, but. But I really liked them, especially as a child, because. They're pictures with a little bit of text, which meant that I could read them and I could follow the story, but I didn't necessarily have to read everything, which meant that if my mum asked me if I knew what was going on, I could say yes. But then there's also the joke of like, look at the pictures, but you know, I could have that sense of progress by getting through all the pages without having to like, feel the drawbacks of being a dyslexic reader, because then it was like, I couldn't understand why it was so much easier for my brother than also we were like 18 months apart, so obviously we'd compare a lot. So it's like why I couldn't understand why he could like read it and I couldn't. So that's why I liked those comics because you get to read it and go through it and read multiple of them. You get the sense of progress that you wouldn't otherwise have if it was all just text. So I'm grateful to those to just let me enjoy the sensation of going, of like turning pages and finishing going through a book because that in itself is a really nice experience uh, of accomplishment. So it's like nice to be able to get that sense of accomplishment from something. And did everyone read the little owl things? Where the mummy owl goes away and she leaves the little baby owls and the little baby owl spends his time and time going, I want my mummy! I can't remember what it's called! I read that so many times and like, I don't know if you guys have that in primary school like some of the like books that were usually this big would be like this big and then it would be like a story for like the teacher reads a story time but then it's really big so all of the children can see the text. I like those. <laughs> I want my mummy! I don't know why that stayed in my head. She only went to get some food. Really like that one. Maybe because I thought it was cute rather than inspired my reading but I really enjoyed it. And obviously I'm one of three so that I think that rang true and obviously that little one is going and I'm like Oh, this is meant to be my baby brother. The next thing I have in big capital letters, little, letters, everybody, talking about books and reading and literature, and she says letters. In big letters, Michael Morpurgo. I, again, am so indebted to Michael Morpurgo for my love of reading. I absolutely adored his books. I think my favourite was probably Born to Run. I think that might be my first hardback cover of anything ever. I really like that, and it was such a stupid thing, but such a nice touch. In the corner of those books, where all of the numbers were, there was actually a flip book. So it was like Greyhound running when you flip through the pages. It's just, I just think that's such a sweet touch. And how all of his books have that relationship between humans and animals, that's sort of the core of all of, essentially all of his novels. Oh, also Roald Dahl, also Charlie Chocolate Factory and the BFG. Them, big fan of them. Little foxes waiting for. Oh, I can't read it. Out of the ashes, the nine lives of Montezuma. Casper. But I read a lot of his books from a library as well, as well though. And it's one with the bear. It's one with the little foxes. That was about foster kids, wasn't it? Either way, I just really enjoyed his novels, and they were always very sweet, quite a bit sentimental, but they were just very a lot about children discovering the world, and I just really. I like those. They would, they're very close to my heart and they'd be something that I'd make my child read, you know? It'd be like, I'd buy that book, like box sets and be like, here you go, <laughs> enjoy! Or like, if they're in a bookshop going, ooh, I'd be like stirring them to steer them towards the... to, 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 to make them think they chose it themselves, but really I chose it for them. <laughs> there was this book called Nevermore by Linda Newbury. I read this so many times, it's this woman turns up with her daughter at a fa like a, 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 a big country house and she starts working there. He the guy saying that his daughter's gonna come back any day, la la la. And there's a massive plot just to the end, but I'm not gonna just spoil it in case you you, you wanna read it, or your child wants to read it, I don't know. But I think because obviously I have a fascination. I'm sure everyone does, like big country houses and all of them mansions and that. So like it revolved around this like mysterious thing of discovering things and like big empty house and ooh trying to put a mystery together. This is the first thing that I remember with like a really good little mystery in it. And just the plot twist at the end. And I think that's one of those ones I got at like book fair or like, do you remember every year at school we'd have like, where you all got vouchers and you got books? World book fair, something like that. The other ones, I was trying really hard to remember what this was. Rainbow magic? Like the ones with all the fairies that are like, 
They're fairies of different things. So like Ruby the Red Fairy, Saffron the Yellow Fairy. They'd come up with different series of like, these are fairies about colors, these are fairies about this. And like that was the narrative for each of them. So they were like, very specific, very short. Our pictures and fairies. I really enjoyed those. I remember getting those at the library. Not at school, but at our, 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 out of our local library and I loved it. The children's section there was really great. Those ones were good because you could get, again, they were short, they were easy to read and you can get through quite a lot of them. The sense of progress is always fantastic. There's these other books that I remember reading. I think there were only six of them or at least six at the time and they were about princesses. I think at a boarding school maybe, but I cannot remember for the life of me what they were called. It's the same concept, you know, every story revolves around a princess about something else, same as the fairies, but like, I just cannot remember what they are called. Obviously, the Harry Potter series, that goes without saying. When I was reading them for the first time, she hadn't yet published Deathly Hallows. She published Deathly Hallows and then I read it almost straight away. That makes me feel old because I actually remember her publishing them, but those, I really like those. Because I was like the right age for it. Well, maybe it was in primary school. And it, either way, I guess it was my first introduction to like secondary school kind of stuff. I really loved those. I cherished them so much as well. Except when poor mum had to buy Louis all of them, me all of them, and Adam all of them because we refused to share. Something about me wrecking one of Louis's copies, which I will definitely deny, but I think Louis would still think that I ripped his book. But I didn't do it. And then mum bought a new one so that I could have it. And then Louis took it and gave me the broken one. I don't think that's fair, but I really like Alice in Wonderland. Again, it's this whole thing of like, let your imagination run free and it's okay to think about things. But like have imagination and be creative. And that's what I really enjoy when children's books celebrate that. And just, you know, anything that celebrates books, uh, like and I, for just that scene in Beauty and the Beast where she opened, where they're just they're going to the library, that is gonna be so, I think that's so important in how it shaped me. <laughs> And just the fact that I do just want an enormous library just so I can on the daily just recreate that scene where it looks like a swan into my library and there's books everywhere. And that's the end of this video. Let me know down below because obviously this is coming from a, a quite an English, British childhood, I guess, even though Belgian is like, yeah, mix that in too. Um, for example, like I never read any of the, I did not like the Jacqueline Wilson books. I never read the uh, Enid Blyton, Enid Blyton? Than any play than like all the Fab Five for some I don't know what they are. Um, I never read those because with my parents not being English, why would my mum think to give me those? Because they're not like she. How would she know their classics? Like kids' classics, if you know what I mean. So this is what we discovered. So I really love. What do you think is a book that shaped you as a child probably the most? I'd be very curious to know. Like, subscribe, and all jazz, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday. I am gonna go back to uploading one video a week until my degree is over, which is in May. It's not that long. <laughs> so yeah, I'll see you guys soon.